Hi, I'm Katie Bunshout and the president and founder of Certum Solutions here in Monroe, North Carolina. And I wanted to talk to you today about undeposited funds. What is it? It is an account that's typically in QuickBooks Online. Why is it there and what does it do? Before we get started, I want to make sure that I remind everyone the way we work. If you like this particular video, please make sure that you like this video. If you like the kind of content we have on the Certum channel, please make sure that you subscribe to our channel for future updates. And make sure, above all, whenever you watch our content, that you always check with your personal advisors and accountants or attorneys to make sure that that pertains to you. Facts change depending on the circumstances, and as they say, it just depends. So let's go ahead and get started. What are undeposited funds? They are actually an account on the QuickBooks Online software, and they can also appear in your software, maybe under a different name. And it actually has the definition in the name, but a lot of us don't realize it. They are undeposited funds. So they are funds you've received via a credit card payment or through a paper check in the mail where you have them on your desk and you have not yet put them in the bank account or deposited them. So what do we do? We have them on our desk. We want to record our customer payment, but we're not quite ready to bring them to the bank. Maybe we're going to get more checks today and we want to wait to the end of the day. But again, we don't want to forget to put them in QuickBooks. So you deposit them to undeposited funds and that way it does not inflate your bank balance and also you've got that information to where you can batch them so if you have five checks you don't see five deposits on your bank account ledger you see one deposit with your batch and we will go through an example of this prior to the end of this video okay this helps you avoid several problems constructive receipt issues which is buried in my channel and i will put a link to it in the description of this video but it uh, basically means when you receive funds that are unencumbered the timing of those funds from a cash basis tax perspective is that you receive them and report them as income when you receive them unencumbered you don't say well i'm going to hold on to this check over here no you have that money you're able to use that money so they're unencumbered okay it create it alleviates batching issues so once again as we just spoke about when you're receiving five different checks you don't want to see five different entries on your bank account ledger no you want to put everything into your undeposited funds account and then make that deposit at one time and you will transfer those funds from undeposited funds into one line item on your bank account ledger it also, by doing so, fixes any reconciliation issues you may have around manual checks, okay? So when you're going to reconcile, you're not going, well, I had five checks on each one of these days and now it's a hot mess because I gotta go through and pick everything, right? No, they're already batched for you, so they'll match your bank statement so it makes reconciliation easy. The last thing that it also helps with, and this is not by any means limited to these, but they're the most common, it recognizes float funds. And what are those? Okay, not only checks, but when you receive credit card payments, you know you'll receive a payment from your customer and it may be a week before it actually hits your bank. Those should sit in your undeposited funds account until that happens, and that's what we call while they're in float, okay? While they're in float, if you're using QuickBooks payments, it will do a lot of this for you, okay? Do you have to use the undeposited funds account? No, if you use, say, mobile banking app, like I use a mobile banking app, and I enter my checks one at a time, and I don't get a whole lot anymore. Most of my stuff goes through QuickBooks payments. And so when they go through QuickBooks payments, it all hits the undeposited funds account through automation in my software, and then it hits the bank account by automation in the software. I don't have to go in and check every day and 
put everything in by hand. There are exceptions to this, okay? So you don't have to use the undeposited funds account, but again, for all the reasons we've already talked about, it is highly, highly recommended that you do. On top of that, when you're doing cash flow forecasts and the rest, you always wanna make sure that the, the figures you're using off of your ledger are based on what was actually available in your bank accounts. That's another thing. You don't want to inflate or deflate any balance sheet accounts, okay? Okay, and then when we manually deposit them, we all talked about just a moment ago, uh, we talked about how when you use QuickBooks payments, it kind of does a lot of it for you. There are exceptions to this, okay? Sometimes uh, there's an issue with the integrate, well, not the integration, the automation piece of it, and it'll glitch just like any tech software. We all have tech, so we all know how this happens on occasion it won't go through you want to check your undeposited funds account while you reconcile your bank account at the end of the month make sure there that nothing got hung up for whatever reason and those you can do manually for your paper checks yes you always have to do those by hand so once you put them in undeposited funds after you receive your customer payment and we will go through this in just a minute um when you actually make that bank deposit, you wanna go ahead and do make bank deposit in QuickBooks and reflect that those were, were deposited to your account, okay? And I hope that additional resources are helpful. I wanted to make sure, because I do talk fast sometimes, I wanted to make sure uh, we also had a visual here. So at this time, I'm going to go ahead and pause this video and we're going to walk through this process within our QuickBooks Online account. And we're back. See all that magic? Shwa, shwa, shwa. Okay, so we're in the Certum Cubo Advanced Demo that we use for most of our demo videos. Although if you are a nonprofit, we have one for you too. Um, and we, oh darn it, that was my first um, I think. And I'm really, oh, that was my second. But we're gonna move on, okay? No more, we're not saying the U word. So if you wanna see the chart of accounts to see where, undeposited funds is on your chart of accounts you can click on the gear to the top right and then click on the first column that i just went to undeposited funds then you see your whole chart of accounts you're like i just want to see one account so we're going to do a little trick here we're going to put in undeposited funds under here and it brings it up it's listed as an other current assets account type in quickbooks which that means that that's where it is on your balance sheet and for those that are not familiar with balance sheets you that lists your assets in order of liquidity same thing with your liabilities so by saying it's another current asset that typically means this is something that we're going to use up within 12 months or in under 12 months and then the detail type is undeposited funds because it's special because so it gets its own type yeah okay so that's the undeposited funds in your chart of accounts we're going to do something real quick and we're going to go to your balance sheet that we just spoke about so in retrospect probably would have been better to talk about this now so here's your current assets on your balance sheet right here okay and I don't immediately see my undeposited funds. Let's see, right here. Okay, so at this point it had an $800 in it and that's because it was dated for last month. If you could see in the ledger, it looked like on the chart of accounts there's actually zero balance there today. And that's what's gonna be typical. You're going to see balances in undeposited funds for like max maybe a week maybe a week and a half if it's for some reason just hung up or you haven't made it to the bank. If you see a balance in your undeposited funds that goes on kind of in perpetuity or heaven forbid, it keeps getting bigger, you probably have a problem. So when you're closing your books each month, you definitely wanna take a look at that, okay? And you can see right here, that's not the point of this video, but it goes from liquid to less liquid and so on and so forth, all the way down to where you get into fixed assets and the, old, the stuff that you're gonna keep around for a long time. Okay, so let's jump over here and let's follow the undeposited funds account through its life cycle, right? I'm not gonna do it with a credit card type of transaction. I'm going to do it with a check. And I kind of left this out, but you can also do it with cash. If you receive cash from your customers, you're putting them in a money bag, depositing them at the end of the day, same concept applies, okay? So we're going to go ahead and say, we're going to receive a payment, okay? And it's gonna say deposit two, and this person has it going straight to the bank. 
we're not going to do that. We want to put it in our undeposited funds account. So let's see if we can't pull that up. And these accounts are sticky. So once you do this once, it should just, and we're going to use our trick again, undeposited funds. Once you do it once, it's going to typically stick. So next time you take a, um, do another deposit, it's going to automatically pop up there. Okay, so I should have checked to see if anybody had a balance due. Yay, the first one. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Katie, prepare better for your videos. Note to self. We're going to pick our payment method check. A lot of people leave that blank or ignore it, but you shouldn't because it's really helpful. It actually, if you're trying to find, say, you leave it blank, you're like, man, I deposited this check back, you know, da-da-da, I don't remember much about it, but I'm trying to find a check. If you're recording your payment method, you can actually run reports off that. If you say, how much do I collect in checks versus credit cards? Ah, let's run a report based on payment method. And that is also not the point of video. Get yourself focused, ma'am. Uh, so we're gonna do payment date. And so if we're getting a check, we're typically going to have a check number. So I'm just going to put that in there and I'm gonna say that we received $150. Actually, we're gonna let this calculate for us, right? We're gonna pick our first one, which is way back in 2021. They should not have an account that old. Thank goodness this is a demo. Okay, so we received uh, $9,510. We're gonna hit save and I'm gonna put save and new because how are we supposed to demo the batching faction? function if uh, you only have one in there. So we're going to do a second one. Okay, we're going to do check. Okay, and we're going to do 2689 on deposited funds. And I'm going to pick the invoice. Okay, so we're going to do save new. And just for the roundness of the number, or actually the oddity of the number, I like the number three. So we're going to do three. One more right here. Check. My team loves that I do these videos because it keeps me from running my mouth all day to everybody because I love to call people and be like, what you doing? Let's talk. Call me if you're bored. I'm here, really, seriously. I have too much time on my hands. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and do three and then we're gonna close this out, okay? I'm gonna save and close. Now, for those of you that may have missed where I went to do that, I went to the new button and I hit receive payment. That's what you're gonna use there. If you have QuickBooks payments, you don't have to worry about that step. It's when that collects it from the customer, it's gonna already book it for you. That's one of the neat things of having that integrated payment solution. And others do, um, there are others to also integrate. So it's not just QuickBooks payments, but QuickBooks payments does make things pretty easy. So once you do that and you've received your payments, we go, gosh, Let's see, let's do balance sheet. We're gonna change it to today. Balance sheets, by the way, another side note, are a perpetual statement. So it's something that's going to keep balances going forward. This one you have to ignore. I invite clients to it and stuff. It's kind of a, uh, a garbage can right now of tests, so it's not accurate. But um, we wanna scroll down for the purposes of what we're doing and look, we see this this balance in undeposited funds. Now with QuickBooks, you can drill down when it's highlighted in blue like that. So we're gonna go ahead and do that, okay? And we can see that this morning, I was actually preparing this account so that I could show you this. And so I cleared out what was already there. So I wanted to start from the beginning. But then you can also see that just now we went and received three more payments. And you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna be kind of crazy and we're gonna receive one more, but we're gonna receive it in cash. Okay, and that's just a side thought because I thought um, it'll kind of round things out for us. Okay, so you can close. Okay, so now we know that we've got this balance in undeposited funds and we're going to make sure we run the report again to make sure it's accurate. You can also check your accounting method. Am I doing cash or accrual? For undeposited funds, it's going to show the date that you deposited it pretty much no matter what, I think. Yeah, perfect. Um, perfect, so there you're gonna see it here. So next step is to make our deposit because we have the money, we've received payment from our customer. We have that payment in our little money bag. I wish I had a money bag thing. Here, I'll use my laptop case. Okay. Let's pretend, if you don't know who Journey is, by the way, they're really cool, I love their stuff. Um, this is our money bag and we've put all of our stuff that we've received today in this bag and we are taking it to the bank. Now I'm going to take it to the bank. Katie, exit stage. 
left or right, whatever side this is going to show up. I'm not sure if it's mirrored or not. Um, so pretend that happened. Uh, as I'm walking out that door, I'm going to say, wait, let's go ahead and put a deposit in. Now, ideally, if you're setting up different permissions in your office, the person putting in the deposit will be, or internal controls, will be different than the person receiving the money, right? Um, just to keep, get rid of fraud or whatever, or make sure there isn't any. But in some small offices, that's not possible. Um, and I keep digressing. That's part of the thing with my videos is you'll see me just do this stuff all the time. And let's make it even more different and say, we actually deposited this on the 9th, which if that happened in my office, I'd probably be a little triggered. I'd be like, we shouldn't keep cash around, especially $50,000. Are you crazy? But in this case, we're just doing it so I can show you something on the balance sheet. Okay. So we're going to deposit that on August 9th. And I'm going to go ahead and pick all these things because I brought all these things from my money bag into the bank. Okay. And as I'm walking out the door to my car in this 100 degree weather in North Carolina in August, it's not fun. Um, that's what I did. Uh, and my deposit slip, you should have a deposit slip. Um, you can also, funny enough, print this one, print a deposit slip. Okay. Let's see. Let's see, do that real quick. So that's another thing you could possibly do is print your deposit slip along with your summary and keep a book of them or, or a digital version of them somewhere in your office. And then you want to hit save and close. Okay. Now we just deposited all that money. Now I'm going to change the date on this to August 10th. Okay. You see how that zeroed back out? So that shows you I took my money from my customer, whether it's cash check or for the sake of argument credit card through the integration and i put it in my undeposited funds but then i took so for this situation i took my three checks and my cash deposit all at the same time so what's going to happen is is that when you go to your bank statement to reconcile at the end of the month let's try to do that it's going to all there be it's going to be a batch okay Of course not. Dingbat. We're looking, f I think, the truest account. Okay. Okay. Oh, good gracious. Okay, so it's been reconciled through March, so we're okay. Sometimes we put stuff in here and it's like, um, not been reconciled in years and I'm going, I'm about to use this on a video. This might be problematic. Um, so typically when you get your bank statement, it's going to be the end of the month. So I'm going to go ahead and put 831. So look at this. You see how this deposit came in? So this is the one I did this morning before the video, and this is the one that we just did. If you can see that down on the second line, if, for the sake of argument, you had skipped these steps and you just put everything straight to the bank, then you'd see on your bank statement, it'd say, here's the deposit you made at the counter today on the, or on the 9th, and here's where you put all of it straight to your bank account one by one by one. Have fun with that. I don't want to have fun with that, okay? I just want it easy and to match the statement, right? We all like easy, kiss method, let's do it, okay? So that right there is, is kind of how that works. Um, if, oh, I did it again. If you have any questions about this video, please let me know. I am going to put the links down in the description on the additional information. There is a page on the IRS website that goes through what constructive receipt is. And I also have a video on what constructive receipt is. And also you can slow this video down because I do hear all the time. I talk really fast. I am trying. Uh, but if I can help in any way, shape or form, if, if you could add a comment or else just email me to the email address listed in my presentation, I will make sure to get back to you. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day. And thanks for supporting our channel like, no, like, subscribe. <laughs> All right. Have a great day. Bye-bye.